Hey, hi everyone. In this video, I will give you a demonstration on how to use Add Yourself Metashape um, by going through the entire workflow so you can create your 3D model. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is to save your project and um, try to remember to save after each step so to avoid any work being lost. So the first step in the workflow is to add your photos. So I'm gonna to go to the folder where I have all of mine saved. And you'll see that in the workspace um, toolbar on your left, it will create a chunk with all of your cameras. So I uploaded 75 uh, photos and you can see an NA next to all of them, meaning they are not yet aligned. And so if you just double click on them, you can see all of the photos that you've uploaded and you can go through them and double check. This one, for instance, is a bit blurry. So I'm gonna remove this one. Okay, and you can also see all of your metadata for each photo by right clicking um, and click and show info. All right, so once you have all of your photos uploaded, you can go to the next step in the workflow, which is aligning. And the um, aligning process is going to create a sparse point cloud for you. Um, and for this, you you can change the parameters. Um, I would recommend starting on low for your first time, um, just to make sure that you have enough photos um, to create the entire model. And then you can go back again and run it on high, um, just because high tends to take um, quite a long time, depending on the amount of photos that you have uploaded. And um, you can deselect generic selection unless you have a lot of photos. Um, so anything over 100, you can uh, click generic pre-selection for. And for the rest of them, you can um, just keep on the default settings. Um, and then if you wanna go back later and mess around with it and try different things, and, um, you're welcome to do so. You just press okay, and the aligning process will start. Okay, so after your alignment is finished, you will see your sparse point cloud. And you can see that some of the photos failed to align. So we can check out which ones failed. Um, but first, if we just take a look at the sparse point cloud, uh, it seems to cover quite a majority of it. And the sparse point cloud is um, a visualization of which image pairs overlap with one another. And these are known as tie points. So um, the greater overlap that you um, did while you were taking your photos, the easier time the software will have in detecting tie points. So we can see that 72 out of 74 of the photos did not align. And if we go down, you can see that these were the ones that did not. Um, so if we wanted to redo the alignment to try to get these two included, um, we could go back to the align photos and try um, different parameters. So if I had done it on low setting, I would try maybe a higher accuracy. Um, I could try generic pre-selection um, and whatever I change, I wanna make sure that I'm resetting the current alignment and then we'll run it again. Um, but since most of them did align, we're going to go ahead with the workflow anyways. So if we go back to the model, the next step before building your dense point cloud would be to change the, um, the surrounding box uh, to make it smaller and so that the software will disregard all of this extra data that we don't need included in the model. So to do that, we would go to the resize region. And we can just make the box a bit smaller. And 
And we can also rotate it so that the model is straight within the box. And take a good look from all angles to make sure that you haven't cut off any of the model. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And now we can go ahead with the next step in the workflow, which is building the dense point cloud. So the uh, dense point cloud is a depth map created from the overlapping um, pairs from the photos, and then they will merge together. Um, and again, you can change the uh, quality of this. I'm going to keep it on high for now and see if that helps. Okay, so now that we have our dense point cloud rendered, uh, we can turn that on by clicking this and we can see how that turned out. So this has all the um, depth information included in it. And from here, we can um, go on to build our mesh. Um, so the mesh is a, um, a polygon um, consisting of vertices and triangles. Um, so if we go here, um, we typically want to use the information from dense cloud, but you can also use it from the depth map. Um, I think that's the only thing we need to change here. So then run that. Okay, so once the mesh is finished loading, we can go here and turn it on. Um, we can see it in its solid form. So that's what it looks like. And you can see that um, there's a bit of a hole there, um, which I'll probably be able to fix later. Um, but that may have been a result of um, those two cameras not aligning. And yeah, everything else looks okay. Um, and we can also turn on the wireframe. So we can see the geometry that makes up the model. Um, so you can see the vertices and the triangles. So the last step is to apply your texture. So if we go to build texture, and this applies um, the color and surface details that are taken from the 2D photos. Um, so the default settings are usually fine for this. Um, you can turn off uh, whole filling if you want. Um, I usually turn this on in this part because um, after the texture is applied and you notice that there are holes, there is an option to close these holes, but the software has a harder time um, applying texture again on top of that. So it's just something to keep in mind. If that's okay. Okay, so once that has finished loading, um, you can turn on the textured model. Textured model, and there we have it. It's more of a um, photographic finish on top of the mesh. So that's um, the basic steps. And if you want to um, do some cleaning, um, for instance, getting rid of all this extra um, data in the background here. Um, you can choose the um, selection tools, um, freeform, rectangle, circle, and yeah, just go around it and delete that. Um, probably clean up the table area. Um, it's a lot of information we don't need. So that's about as much um, editing I would do in EdgeSoft. And for the rest of the post-processing, I would use um, either MeshLab or MeshMixer um, so we can clean up these branches a little bit better in there, um, maybe fill this bigger hole 
And yeah, that is about it. Um, so the last few things is you'll be able to see the um, geometry count that makes up the model down here. Um, you're able to decimate that if you wish um, by going to tools, I believe, uh, mesh, yep, and decimating mesh. Um, so this will simplify the geometry. Um, and depending how much you simplify it, it may visually um, reduce the resolution of your model. So it's something to keep in mind. And from here, I would save my project and export it so that I can move it to a different um, software or um, upload it online. So go to export model, and I would probably choose a OBJ. So that is it for that.